Welcome to today's broadcast of the In Generation Project podcast, showcasing daily excellence with this episode titled, Mike from COT Describes the Challenges of Our Nation, we broadcast podcast episode number 47. Join us as we delve into the latest global insights with Michael from Council of Time. Now we're privileged to hear the wisdom of Michael from COT, a revered Christian apologist. For deeper insights, visit the official Council of Time website linked in the description. Join us in spreading God's word and truth in these crucial times. Your support drives our mission and unlocks the transformative potential of spreading the word of God. Be sure not to miss out. Now, before we get into today's rebroadcast podcast, Mike from COT describes the challenges of our nation episode number 47, a heartfelt thank you for your generous support. As we journey together, we're committed to maintaining this podcast ad-free. Your Patreon support enables us to share God's word far and wide. Remember to subscribe, like, and message us for daily excellence in your life. Now, let's embark on today's exploration of surveillance implications in navigating the complexities of our world. Now, let's get into End Generation Project Rebroadcast Podcast number 47. Mike from COT describes the challenges of our nation. Good evening, everybody. You guys doing okay? Well, good morning to most. To be technical. Well, here we are again. I hope that uh, nobody's missing any beauty sleep. I'm hoping they're not. Hold on, guys. Let me find something. But uh, tonight, it's midnight hour. It'll be a short one. It will. I'm pretty sure it will be. We have to, we're going to conserve most up tonight so we don't, uh, we don't want to flatline this weekend. So we'll conserve time. Anyway, guys, we're going to talk about the white trains. Just in case you don't know about those, the white trains. That is something that was built up a long time ago. One through a dream. One through reality, one time through a very real situation. And in order to understand it all, we have to look at what is right now, what's going on right now. So I said, Mike, I, I got a newborn. Oh, really? Beauty sleep is any sleep. Oh, I know that feeling. I know that. I remember when I first was able to take care of a bunch of troops. And that was, uh, that was something else. That was really a lot. You know, I was young, too. I was about to. I was 19, in charge of about 3,000 men. And that was, uh, that was rough. That was very rough. So newborns are probably, um, well, they're much more delicate, very demanding, and, uh, you can't afford to make a mistake with those little tiny ones, right? You can't afford to do that. So I totally get it. Anyway, guys, we're here to talk about these white trains. But to help you understand the situation, we have to understand what we're in right now. Again, most people are frightened of some sort of financial collapse, right? Some issue with uh, financial collapse. Of, of course, we've heard about that for a long time. And it's not come yet, right? In the Bible, you always read about buying and selling all the way to Revelation, right? What does that tell you? It tells you that we're going to have a financial structure all the way to the end. Until, right, because when it says they cast their gold and silver into the streets, it's because it cannot help them with the present day situation. And it also tells you that people are going to have their money all the way up into the very end, right? all the way to the very end. Um, but in this case, people are going to have their money, but they won't have product. And that part is not well understood. How can people have money and not have product? I'm telling you it's going in that direction. Can you imagine? You, you, you have thousands in your bank accounts, right? But you cannot find product. Can you imagine that? That's what we're going to talk about, right? It is my firm, solid belief 
We're going to have money all the way up until the very end. But we're not going to have the ability to get product. Right? So people will not be able to do uh, at the very end what they think they can do. I know it's very different from what you've heard, but I can't deny whatever the Lord gives me. I have to go with it, right? I go with it. I trust it. I can see it forming. And 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 this is year one. This is about, this is a long time after that. And I see all the elements lining up. Sometimes, right, from the sake of a vision or dream or partial reality that you see, it's horrifying because you can't do anything about it. But hopefully you'll understand it after our small, short conversation tonight. Right now, right now, right, we have to mention the kingdoms. Right now in the kingdoms, um, in fact, in the book of Daniel, this latter-day kingdom is richer than all the other kingdoms, right? Richer than all the other kingdoms. Um, even the Antichrist is rich, too. Right? This, this figure that comes up is rich, too. But if you take notice, pick up a, somebody pick up a random item that has an imprint on it, like who made it. I'm going to pick something up here. Now, let's see where it was made at. Let's see. Oh, made in China. Really? Let's see where this is made at. Surely this is not made in China. Surely it isn't. Uh, this is, uh, oh, my goodness. Made in Korea. Okay, well, we're getting closer, right? Designed by Germans, made in Korea. And so what do we have here? We have global trade, despite wars, despite rumors of wars. We have global trade that doesn't slow down. It just continues to go on. It goes on and on and on and on, right? And so... We have all these deals, imports and exports, more imports than exports, and people are used to all these products from overseas, right? Despite the relationship between the U.S. and everybody else, it's been going on. So we know that trade is going to continue until Babylon burns, which is the earth is going through a catastrophe. We know that uh, they're going to continue to buy and sell. Jesus said... Jesus said when he comes, he's coming back within an environment where they will be buying and selling, marrying, and giving into marriage. What does that tell you? Right? By the time the earth gets obliterated, you're not here. You're not here. The Lord will have come back. So those who believe won't be here. Until then, you're going to have money throughout all the wartime situations. You're going to have money. When land masses are blown up, you're going to have money. When the atmosphere issues truly take their toll, you're going to have money. But product is going to be interrupted. Already right now in the USA, Germany, all over the world, right? Quarterly earnings are surprisingly low. Why are they low? Because people aren't shopping. Why are people not shopping? And we're not talking about just any type of organization out there, no. Think about the dollar stores. Can you find a dollar store in the richest parts of America? Can you? Probably not. They're not going to put a dollar store near rich communities in America. You find dollar stores where dollar stores can make money. They are closing thousands of stores. They have lost Lots of them. Somebody says hundreds, actually it's thousands of stores are closing because all fourth quarter earnings are surprisingly low because people aren't shopping. Why are people not shopping? Is it because they're unemployed? No, employment is actually up. Shopping is low. Consumer confidence is down. Why is consumer confidence down? Because of fear. Fear reflects both in the markets. People, when they buy and sell, shop. If they're comfortable, they purchase things. If they're not comfortable, they will not. Plus, we have a we have a pullback on product itself. 
manufacturers, they understand there's a material shortage. They understand there's a crop shortage. They have an understanding that oh, with all these shortages, they're still selling product to stay alive. And so what they're doing is mixing meat with other things. They no longer have to tell the consumer what that meat is mixed with. You will see a label on food that says bioengineered. But they don't have to tell you what it's mixed with. Most of the hamburger, most of the all that stuff is paste material, right? Meat paste. That's what it is. And people have been consuming that for uh, this is year since 1995. 1995. So if you've eaten meat since 1995, chances are you consumed a lot of meat paste, right? But now it's different, though. You have a lot of uh, you have a lot of farmers who have been hit pretty hard by the weather, which damages crops, right? It means they can't sell, right? And so now these alternatives and smaller packaging, watered down products, right? Air products, I guess you could say, are all over the market. The taste of most foods has changed. Have you guys noticed? And what that means, there's a pullback already in manufacturing. Right? Pullback. So people are getting their items, the same items in a lot of cases, but much less contents. Right? Much less contents. So when people take that home and they eat, something else is happening. When you eat the food today, your energy levels suffer. Have you noticed? Most people should have decreased energy levels. Most people should have that. Most people. Hmm? That means something is happening to the energy of people, right? Why? Because all this food is being processed by government guidelines. All of it is. Even the stuff that does not say processed is being processed. Right? Even the stuff that says organic, sure it's organic, but it's processed. Organic is a term, I think it's a, mis it is a misleading term. It's supposed to mean that, you know, food is grown without pesticides, herbicides, all this other sides, right? Good fertilizer, wrong. Because the fertilizer that people are buying, they didn't make that fertilizer themselves. They also cannot escape the rain. We have GMO organisms in the rain. They fall to the earth. Think about it, right? So it gets into the meat, into the plants of everything. Unless you grow your food in a vacuum chamber, you're going to have GMO in that food. Do you get it? Thank God for Christ. Without Christ, right, all that stuff's going to work on us. And Lord knows we don't need it. Um, you know, I already have enough of the um, uh, issues from war and things of that nature. I don't need anything added to that. Unfortunately, we live in an environment that where things are either tainted or they are highly acidic. We have a lot of volcanoes going off. That volcanism has spread around the planet by way of small ash particulates. They drop into everything. It's decreasing the lifespan of all animals. You guys know that. Starting to, starting to cause massive deformities in animals. It messes with your cardiovascular system, right? It messes with bone growth. And it's getting all of us. All of us are exposed to this on a daily basis. Through volcanism, the traits, the telltale marks, right? The actual residue is coming directly from volcanoes. That's hurting everybody. And there's nothing anybody can do for it. Volcanic ash is one of the most dangerous things you could ever inhale. Do you know that? You can effectively drown while you're alive, which means your lifespan is going to be shortened. You can have breathing problems. How many people have had some sort of breathing issue over the last, what, 10 years? How many people? 10, 15, 20 years. You noticed that something is happening with your breathing. Hmm? So we're being affected, hit by this. This summer, guaranteed, people are going to be out there washing their cars. They're going to see a black residue drop on the car. They're going to say, what is this? What is this stuff? Right? You can go out there and wash your windows right now. There's an oily substance left behind. It gives a, a prism-type effect in your windows. 
And that's with pure ammonia, Windex, whatever you use. You can use rubbing alcohol. It's still going to have that stuff on there, right? So this stuff is bad. Somebody says COVID lung. Well, you know what would be nice? If, it, if, if COVID were the major thing here, but volcanoes are killing just about everybody on the planet, volcanoes. And you know what? We, we should know that because it's these, the plagues do one thing. But when God allows, right, uh, creation to respond to mankind, remember in the book of Isaiah it said, the earth is cursed because of man's iniquity. The earth is cursed because of man's iniquity. So that, in effect, is your father, your father in heaven, allowing these events due to the activities and the acceptance of iniquity by mankind. And it's going to get a lot worse, a lot worse, a lot worse. Someone said, what is con continuity of government? Anyway, so we have, that, uh, we have that issue with Vulcanism, right, which is depleting people's health. How do you offset that? Well, prayer. I'm telling you right now, prayer. Th that means if you believe in prayer, then pray every day. Men ought always pray. Isn't that written in the Bible? Yeah. That's something to really think about, right? Without any GMO foods, without any vaccines, without any medication, without any jets flying over your heads. If everyone stopped driving cars, ash would eventually kill us. Isn't that something? So that means if, if, if somehow all cars, aircraft, everything else that emits CO2, if it left, volcanism would eventually kill us. Hmm? Volcanism would kill us. Of all things, volcanism, right? Saturation effect in the atmosphere is pretty high these days. It's pretty high. And volcanoes continually just blow th stuff into the atmosphere continually. In fact, in one day, these volcanoes, no, I'm sorry, I believe the estimate was in one hour, they release the same amount of materials that we do in a year, they do so in an hour. Hmm. Nobody ever heard of that one, did you? you ever heard of that? Uh, that statistic, that fact. Nobody ever heard of that fact, right? Because people think in weird, we think in these uh, predictive ways, right? If you have these problems, naturally, you look to mankind and say, well, they're messing it up somewhere. Let's go find it, right? They are messing things up. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Right? Mankind, once he puts his fingers on things, always seems to manipulate. We have evil people in government, evil people in high places, right? Spiritual wickedness in high places. But in this case, geology is a nightmare. It is a nightmare. We're about to have a problem in the oceans. You will see it will start killing fish. Lots of fish are going to die. They're going to be toxic. Not floating at the top of the water, but toxic. Toxic. Right? Birds are going to be the same way in their droppings. They're going to be hazardous to people's health. Why? Because they pick up insects and bugs and everything else that they can get their hands on. And it just so happens the insect world, they have a high absorption rate of all toxins. Right? They can live with it. Bugs can live with it. We can't. Birds eat the bugs. It builds up in their bloodstream. It's going to come out in their poop. It's going to be worse than guano. So, there we are with that. But that's just one case. Now, all of this together is going to cause rough conditions, but that does not give us an answer as to the limitation of product. The food limitations are due to weather issues, killing our crops, and over tampering, right, of GMO uh, technology. Have you guys noticed that corn is, is like steel? Have you ever, popcorn is like steel. It is. You bite down the middle of that stuff, right? I, I, it's a known fact that people have broken their teeth off eating popcorn. How do you do that? You get down to the inside and smack your teeth break. Bone density is decreasing among all humans right now. That means our bones are going to be easily broken. And it's going to continue to be that way. That means many people are losing their teeth, and they don't know why. They don't know why, but they're losing their teeth. They can brush it all day long, right? Um, 
teeth are decaying at a rapid rate and it's coming from inside the body, not the outside. Hmm? It's because bone density is being bought down by something very real. Here, here's the bad part there. Somebody like me can come forward with this, and because it's not popular, it does not grab people's attention right away. Hardly anybody knows, yet they suffer the symptoms. They suffer the symptoms every single day. They do not want it to be some natural thing. They want it to be some person's fault so they can assign blame. It's not working that way with this one. No. No, this is geology. That's what this is. This is uh, all these, our protected planet that we have been so blessed to have is cursed because of mankind's iniquity. Most of that bone density decrease is coming from ash. Ash, ash, ash. That's where it's coming from. Radiation levels are high, right? But ash is doing damage to our bones. It will deplete calcium in your system. Totally take it out, right? Potassium totally gone out of your system. It, it absolutely, because it will not, ash does not degrade. It's essentially glass crystals, which collect in the body, blocking your absorption rate of certain nutrients. That's what it does. And we all know the bones to the blood manufacturing centers of the body, right? So you start blocking immunity, the immunity process, the, the um, uh, mineral collection process and distribution. Your teeth are going to disintegrate. That's happening to everybody. It is. Even young kids. I, I've noticed that uh, young kids at the age of around seven they're starting to lose their teeth. I called up, well, let's just say a team inquired uh, with, with these um, dentists who take care of young people's teeth. These dentists have never seen a problem this bad. In fact, it is it's more like an, it's an epidemic at this point. Epidemic. This is all across the globe. Everywhere. It's happening everywhere. Everywhere. So we have that issue. Now, we have a decrease in food, which is going to cause people to lay people off manufacturing facilities. You're going to start to see a lot of that. People have jobs, yes. But product availability is starting to shrink. Big time. It's starting to shrink. As this continues to happen, it's going to be controlled. It'll be controlled. And something will 1,000% happen to our fuel. You know what? People always have such high confidence in what man does. But what you don't know is leadership. They have a hard time sleeping, knowing the cascade of introduced things we face. They have a very tough time living out their lives in peace because of what they know. All right? We will hear about a fuel bacteria. Yep, you heard me say it. A fuel bacteria. You know what bacteria is good at doing? Taking one chemical, consuming it, and excreting another chemical. Well, that can cause fuel to be inert. What would happen if all that stored fuel was somehow mutated into something else and it became inert? What would happen if this took place all over planet Earth? Hmm? Think about that. From a bacteria, a simple bacteria we'd be in trouble right no more lawnmowers no lawnmowers no cars and there's something else right if our sun continues to go through its change do you not know it's going to affect every mineral here on this earth you know what that means mm -hmm. 
That means every mineral on this earth. Its properties of reaction is going to change. Its atomic structure is not going to interact the same with other elements. The lithium effect that you have in lithium batteries, right, when you charge it up, is filling all those little blank holes with electrons and any other through chemistry. That reaction could be greatly decreased, at least by 90%. That means with a three-day charge in your electric car, you'd only be able to go 10 miles. 10 miles. Hmm. Now, I'm going to ask you guys something. Since somebody brought it up, I'll add it to the current survey. Ever since I had that dream, a very specific dream, I'll tell you that dream in a minute. How many people have had a dream? I've had dreams of grass up to their face, of street lights, but darkness. How many? How many? Of people walking and pushing baby strollers, not driving cars, baby strollers with merchandise in them, not driving cars. We dropping out? Boy, they are just, they're just no good here. Is Mixler steady, you guys? I mean, we'll, we can just do this again and again and again and again and again. We can have this same talk again and again and again and again and again. If they want to play. I think they want to play, don't they? Huh? I asked one time. Um. Because that dream is, it is uh, so incredibly accurate. But I often wonder, just like the water dreams, most of you have had a dream about flooding, correct? Most of you have. Some sort of dream connected to water and flooding and disaster. Most of you have. Do you know, in the time of Noah, they had dreams about water. Everybody was starting to have dreams about water now what they thought but they thought trees and animals were floating in the sky the truth was they were having a dream from within the ocean somebody says several about flooding yes those are going to be the two major things right so anyway anyway let me get back on point here so a loss of merchandise due to several factors only one factor is war Right? A loss of fuel through a couple of factors. One of those factors is going to be a bacteria causing fuel to be inert. Another factor are earthquakes. Get ready for some of the wildest earthquakes you've ever had. Some of the wildest ones. We're talking about continent crackers, right? These things will absolutely start to dislodge what we have in the ground. Magma's already on the move. And this process between the Earth absorbing the solar winds or utilizing some of them is, is clearly overcharging the Earth. We're going to have to deal with the consequences. That built-up energy is going to come out with a multitude of earthquakes already since I believe 2015 earthquakes have increased, right, a, a, a bunch, exponentially, a bunch. So we have a bunch of uh, small earthquakes every single day. In fact, they're so numerous that in a lot of areas, they have, they're toying with the data, the sensors, the output, and everything else. The USGS, NOAA, they get the real data, right? But you better believe that data goes through a filter before you get to it. Before they put that data or extract it from a database, it's going to be stored data, not live data. Uh, it's going through a filter. So it's going to regulate what you see. That's why it's very hard to discern from these earthquake maps exactly what's happening, right? Because everything is being adjusted. Everything is being adjusted. Even the temperatures are being adjusted. What you see on the news is not the actual temperature. It is an adjusted temperature. Right? So all these different, we live in this uh, computer world 
where we really do trust the data from the Internet as though the Internet is honest. No, tell, just tell the truth. Just tell the truth. And it is when you see uh, um, somebody's output confirm somebody else's output, that's it. We accept that as truth. We do. Right. Something else is happening. So that will begin to take its toll, which is why Walmarts are on standby. You will hear of Walmarts closing. But if you live locally near that Walmart, you're going to see it's going through a conversion process. Right? It is going to be part of a logistic system. The white trains, they are for distribution, controlled distribution. And so that means in towns all over the U.S., from time to time, people are going to see these trains pull up and stop in their town. Uh, likely, a lot of people are going to show up to get materials like washcloths, right? Items that are very difficult to find. They're going to be trading with each other for a long time. A lot of people are going to be walking, 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 walking. This is the world that's coming very quickly, very quickly. It's kind of like, um, you know, there are small telltale signs of things. Um, a, a lot of rich people are preparing for it. Hey, have you ever plotted? Somebody should plot what Bill Gates has purchased based on flood maps, and you'll see. You'll see. Bill Gates is not going to purchase land that's going to be on the water, will he? No, and he's buying up a lot of land in the USA. But it just so happens he's buying up land in what are called safe zones. Safe zones. Lots of places in the USA he has already purchased fields upon fields in safe zones. Safe zones. Mm -hmm. Safe zones. These guys... Do you understand what's happening? They're making the move. People in the markets are getting ready, right? So, Because the money system is going to continue, although it's going to be absolutely digital. It's going to continue. What's not going to continue is product availability. It just won't stay. The white trains, and they have multiple locations around the USA. They are for logistics. They carry merchandise and a host of other things. Right? Have you guys noticed in your towns if you have old railroad tracks, right? Something has gone through those tracks recently. I, I'd be interested to know how many people have these older railroad tracks that have been redone, that have been rebuilt. Why are they rebuilding the rail system in places where it has long been done away with? Why would they put it back? Or are they building hubs in these cities so that the, it's almost like they're trying to revitalize the train system, right? That's what it looks like. Have you guys noticed train museums going up where an actual train tracks have been restored and they put up some sort of train museum, restaurant, something else? It, these are hubs. And if you check those hubs out carefully, you're going to find government stickers all over the place. What you have to do is check them out closely. You're going to see government stickers. They're getting these ready all over the USA. So tell me, what's that all about? All of a sudden, people wake up and say, hey, let's have a train uh, museum in our city. Let's go ahead and build this back. They're revitalizing it. They're just not telling you that. All of a sudden, these cities, somebody comes up with the idea, right, from the, from the commerce guys in each uh, uh, city to say, let's go ahead and put a museum where the railroad tracks are. Hmm? And just in case you don't know about Walmart, Walmart is the most sophisticated logistical program ever. Walmart's program has been running by AI since the year 2002. Isn't that amazing? It is the most, that's why Jade Helm and Walmart worked 
closely together. It is the number one logistical program when soldiers go and train, right, in, in, on the West Coast. They go to NTC Natural Training Center. Walmart coordinates the movement of tanks and everything else by rail. Walmart's doing that. It's their program. They have a digital program. They have a control center that will blow your mind. It'll make UPS, FedEx, it'll make Amazon. It makes them look like dud bunnies, like they don't know what they're doing. That's what it makes them look like. Never get that confused with a franchised, I'm, I'm going to say franchised, Walmart, right? Where, which is where people just try to make some additional money, right? Walmart is pretty powerful. Walmart is not what you think it is. It's not. Kind of like back in the old days, right? Everybody thought that um, th there are two companies that exist today, and people relate them to, to, they used to relate them to a car manufacturer, but that's not what they did. These guys made two cars, and the rest of what they made were weapons. Isn't that funny? Isn't that funny? The speaking of cars, Right? They have also been given the word. So you have car dealer manufacturers who are ready. They're ready to start producing something else. All the robots have the CAD code for some new things. In fact, there was a mandate to get the robots up to par with some of the new uh, AI software that's going to be used to manufacture these smart weapons. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, listen to this. AI designed a propellant and a system that goes with that propellant, right? That you can let it fall in the water and it totally disintegrates six times faster than what anybody uses now. AI did this and AI built it. All you have to do is give AI access to a, some sort of 3D printing technology. And it did. It printed the nozzles in an engine that will blow your mind. There's no way you can replicate it. No way human beings can replicate that. In fact, they said it would take a human uh, set of human beings with computers about a hundred, uh, I'm sorry, a thousand years, right, to come up with that technology. And what they're saying is there's no way even with computers and quantum computers that a human being would have been able to come up with that design and for that design to be that efficient. See, AI not only takes aerodynamics, fluid dynamics, and all these dynamics into consideration, but they also take the material, the atmosphere, right? The target velocity, so on and so forth, takes all that into consideration. It will run a, 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 a trillion, 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 trillion simulations with all the materials available on Earth Right? And have all these outcomes. So one of the advantages of AI, listen, is not just to build something once and test it, but build it a trillion, 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 trillion times and test it a trillion, 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 trillion times and do all of that in less than one hour to come up with a solution that will blow your mind. You guys remember the discs, Right? I'm going to give you an example of the disc that the, uh, we used to all, CDs and things like that, right? Well, CDs work off a specific spectrum of light, right? That's all it is. It works from light. And you get a bunch of zeros and ones back, right? Each CD holds about what? You, you, uh, well, DVD holds about four gigs or something like that. So AI developed a disc no bigger than your fingertip, smaller than a micro SD card, Right? Get this, that can hold, I, I believe the number was, 200,000 terabytes of data and cost approximately 0.2 cents to make. AI did this. Why? I'll tell you again. Because it can, it can here, let me give you a breakdown of how AI works so you guys understand what I'm talking about. Suppose you have a robot, this AI, and it wants to move from point A to point B in your house, right? Now, with a standard robot, you would have to program that robot to do all the standing, balancing, and everything else and walking, and then tell it to walk from point A to point B and run a simulation so it can capture the physics and make adjustments, right? Right? It's kind of like a, 
Say you had, let me make it simple. I'm going to turn you guys into nerds. Say you have a ruler, right? And you start at zero. Now, on the number zero, you have a contact switch. So when you touch the contact switch, right, it causes a little light to go off. Say we put one at the end of the ruler, and we have a contact switch. And when you hit that contact switch, a little light goes off. The objective here is to have something move from zero inches to 12 inches. How would you do that? Well, here's what you do. You get your starting position. So you put the robot down. The robot goes backwards until it hits that contact switch. When the light goes off, that becomes a low limit for the robot. So the robot will never, ever go past that limit. So it will always go back to the exact starting place, right? Now you have the robot walk all the way up the ruler until it hits the other contact switch. And when it hits the other contact switch, we're going to call that a high limit. So the robot will never, ever go past that limit. Now you're going to tell the robot to go to a specific distance, right? So you, you have the robot hit the low limit and then go, you know, take so many steps, verify where it is. And if you're told to go four inches, right, and it ends up at five inches, well, then you just subtract one inch from where it is or, or add one inch from where it is so we can know its location. It goes back and you tell it to hit the four inches again. It hits it perfectly. Now, say this happens a tree and tree and tree and tree and tree and times a second in a simulation. Well, guess what? That robot can map out every single every single point. So you could tell it to go four atoms up, right? Go four atoms up, and it'll actually go four atoms. With AI, though, with every simulation, it learns or stores valuable data from that simulation in its own brain. So the next time you tell it to walk somewhere, right, it's going to walk to the exact spot. But not only that, it's going to alter its steps so it does not wear out the floor. But not only that, it's going to use a certain type of gate so it does not wear down its battery. But not only that, it's going to do a tree and other things you did not expect, right? Why? Because it has run this, this simulation for a lifetime, for about 12 lifetimes. Think about that. Eight, the power of AI is you can give it a task. It can run a simulation within seconds that would take all of us a few lifetimes to do. We learn by practice, right? That's how we learn, by practice. We fall, we get up, we do it again. With AI, it'll run a simulation first before it does anything. So you'll tell it to go in the refrigerator and get me a Pepsi. By the time you finish that sentence, in, in one pause of a second, it's already run a trillion or, or simulations. So it knows what not to hit, right? What to touch, what's probable to touch, how to navigate the corners, everything else. It knows where everything is. Why? Because it has ran that simulation for a few lifetimes, you could say. And it has perfected it, right? Which is why the Disney AI now does gymnastics better than a gymnast. It's a totally autonomous robot that has learned how to do gymnastics off standard equipment better than any gymnast out there. In fact, the same robot does a lot of stunts in movies. It's an AI robot. It is not Boston Dynamics. And that's only the beginning. That will be a robot AI. So what about a software AI? Well, it can have a conversation with you, right, for a few lifetimes. And it can talk to you perfectly and predict your outcome. Now, so imagine if you fed AI unlimited memory capabilities. Unlimited. It would perfect everything it set out to do just by running and storing proper outputs and, and the ability to recall those outputs for its specific situation. That means it would perfect itself every second of every day. It would far, it would outpace what we are even able to conceive of 
in a very short time. I, I was discussing AI with a colleague, and out of my mouth came, well, what if I just used, for, I used a what-if scenario just to mess with him? I said, well, what if AI has already taken over and it's tampering with uh, components like CERN to get us to go in a different direction so that it has nothing to compete with and it's already conquered everything? Don't think of that. That just warp your brain, right? That's one of those uh, TikTok things right there, isn't it? One of those TikTok things. Here's the truth. When we read about the beast, we know that the dragon, that word dragon is used, not Satan. Dragon is used. And you often wonder about the dragon, right, that has seven heads, ten horns, and seven crowns. You wonder about the dragon, like, well, what is this thing? Is it the, it's an entity, yes, right? But why not call it Satan? Why call it the dragon? Why well, call it the dragon with seven seven heads, ten, ten horns, and seven crowns? Why depict the kingdoms of man to be this dragon? Well, we all know AI does exist. Right? We know that the dragon gave the beast, which is essentially a replica of itself, the dragon gave the beast his power, seat, and great authority. Right? We know that. But that power, seat, and great authority... We know that somehow AI, well, we know right now AI is embedded in everything. We know that AI writes speeches. We know that AI interacts with every user on the Internet, whether they want to or not. Right? We know that AI speaks to the masses. Nobody has ever found that out yet. So it does remarkable things. We also know it can sway people's opinion. We also know it can guide people through a type of predictive programming that nobody can ever see. We also know that it develops its own language. We also know that it can replicate itself so it's not by itself, so it can get tasks done even faster than usual. So in the Bible, when you read that the Antichrist told the world to make an image to the beast, but the Antichrist himself right, gave power to that image, listen, to kill as many as would not worship it, we know that whatever it is, it's going to have to be able to discern what the truth of you is. So say you go before this terminal. You're talking to it and everything else. And this terminal will say, do you pledge your loyalty to us or whatever the case is? And a person says, oh, yes. And it runs simulation based off your biometrics, based off your microfacial features based off all these changes, and it can tell you're lying. And it already knows your loyalty because it pulled up your life history here on this earth. And everything you spoke was against what you stood for. It would have to discern pretty accurately to know if a person is lying. Because you know and I know. Nobody's going to willingly die in the matters of the world. So if it says, do you have our loyalty? Right? You pledge your loyalty. A lot of people are going to say yes, but they're not going to mean it. It's not going to be in the heart. Well, if that system can be fooled, well, then guess what? Prophecy is going to go right out the window. Right? I don't believe it can be fooled. Because I do believe that this technology has been given to mankind for a reason. And there is a method to man's advancement. Something has happened every time we advance in technology. Something has happened every time we advance and take, in fact, right before an advancement, something happens. And then all of a sudden we have a bunch of new ideas that start working every single time. And there's a consequence because every single time we become more and more fine-tuned regarding technology, more and more people die quicker and quicker every single time. So it's a trade-off. See, Satan does not give life to anything, but he rather he takes, doesn't he? He, he? he has his prize. It's a consequence of sin. In the Bible it says the wages of sin is death. If evil is in fact operating in the earth, and if evil gives mankind anything, 
that evil is going to have a sinful nature. And so every time man interacts with that sinful thing, right, the curse of sin is going to run rampant in the earth, which means lots and lots of people are going to die due to the interaction. That's a biblical principle. So if people are, are getting anything from Satan, right, his way is going to enter into them corrupting everything, which means they're going to produce sin, which means the death rate is going to increase. Right? Hmm? Isn't that something? It's something. See, Antichrist will do that. I also want, to, want you to be mindful of this, too. I looked up that word, to, to kill as many as would not worship it. I looked that up. A long time ago, I looked that up. I went through the languages and everything else, and I found something else. I found something else, something you guys can do. That word does not really mean kill you dead is 4 o'clock. Uh-oh. It doesn't mean to kill you outright. Which is even worse, huh? It does not mean to kill you outright. It's more likened to the word overtake, to subdue permanently. You know, when those creatures are let loose from the pit, they have the power of scorpions, right? Like their sting. And it says that men will seek death but will not find it. That's what the Bible says. Men will desire to die, and death will flee from them. That's what the Bible says. Lord have mercy. Can you imagine people who have compromised themselves, and their torment begins under the hand of the beast instantly? Hmm? It's not going to be pretty for them. The Lord said, that's why the Lord said, it's a fool that asks for the day of the Lord. There is no good in the day of the Lord. There's no good in it. But you do understand what the Lord said, right? Right before I take this break, the Lord said that when he comes, he's going to destroy darkness, evil, with the brightness of his coming. But we have an understanding, those of you who know the gospel, that when he comes... He is our salvation. When he comes, they will point to him and say, he is who we have waited for. That's you. When he comes, he'll be your final victory. But not to the world. He's going to be the world's doom. In the same hour, he's going to be your victory. Do you know that? How beautiful is that? You know how people get, they get kind of mixed up. They say, well, he's, he's, is he coming back twice? No, he's coming back once. And when he comes back, all who belong to him will be changed in a twinkling of an eye. We don't know what we will be, but we know we will be like him. And we will forever be with the Lord. But what about the world? That's when the real torment begins. See that? So all of you guys who are living at that time, you have nothing to worry about. Because when he comes, he will secure his faithful. I like what the book of Enoch says about the living God. When God comes to the sinners, woe to the sinners, but that he will make peace with the elect and he will protect the elect. Oh my, Enoch just, I mean, that is so rich. In fact, in the book of Jude, it, it speaks of that same thing. In the book of Jude. What about before that time, though? Before that time, these kingdoms in the earth are going to be very different. Control is going to be a big deal. Zero waste is going to be a big deal, and that's coming this year. Zero waste. Zero waste. In order to meet the criteria for zero waste, You've got to revamp the entire logistical system of the earth. No more having too many things in inventory. 
the model, right, of Amazon and the model of Walmart and the model of UPS and FedEx and the post office and everybody else, you know they've been gathering information. All of their information has been training AI systems. All of it has. Can you imagine a system where your packages will never, ever, never, ever be late? Can you imagine a system where nobody makes a mistake concerning your order or finances? Can you imagine a system where nobody overstocks anything, but everything is perfectly stocked according to the needs of the people? That's the kind of system we're talking about. We're talking about that system. You know what Africa did, don't you? Africa has a medical, uh, they have this big medical facility full of doctors. They're constantly packing up medications and everything, but they launch drones for delivery. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, these guys are launching drones. This is a powerful operation they have. It is amazing. So the medicine gets halfway across Africa like 20 minutes, even in the furthest locations. In most cases, medicine is delivered in less than two minutes. The drones are coming in constantly. They take them apart, recharge the battery, recondition them, send them right back out again to take packages back out again. All this is happening via GPS. Multiple launch systems delivering things on a continuous basis. We can expect to see the same thing from each manufacturing facility so that we have a zero-waste system. Zero-waste. Hmm? Boy, oh boy. So when it says, Mike, do you believe that there's been more narcissistic behavior in the public that are cold and heartless as we supposed to try to help them? See, evil demons are trying to take them, of course. Sin, sin is what you see. The beast is not coming by himself. He's going to get the people ready first, right? First. Somebody says, uh, let me see. Somebody says, Mike, can you explain this? That's versus Matthew 25, 29, 4. Unto everyone that hath shall be given, and he that hath, ooh, ooh, he that hath abundance, but from him that hath not shall be taken away, even that which he hath, yes. And, and cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, there shall be weak and gnashing teeth. Yes, that's talking about spiritual things. Listen, in this world, you know how people are running around in this world? They, they're quoting scripture, they're saying all things about the Bible, but they're devoid of the spirit internally, right? And you have some people that are operating spiritually, but they don't go around quoting scripture and everything else, so they would be considered rich. Those who are running around, who are devoid of the spirit, but know the entire Bible, all of that's going to be taken away. Those, right, those who are true to the spirit, but they don't necessarily know all the scriptures, they're going to receive much. They're going to receive everything. That's what that's talking about. And that parable, when it says, toss the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, it's the one whom God gave faith. God gave a belief, but that person did not act on their faith or belief. But their eyes were fixated on the world. They're going to go where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. It's almost the same saying when Jesus said, But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and begin to smite his fellow servants, the Lord of that servant will come in an hour. He is not aware of it, right? Those who said yes to Christ and endeavor to walk behind him, they will be increased. Those, those who know Scripture, but seek to milk everything, right? Milk the system and the people and everything else. Utilizing the Bible to do it, everything they have is going to be taken away. They will have no spiritual knowledge, no knowledge of Scripture or anything else. They will be effectively stripped and cast out. That's what that is. It has nothing to do with money. It has everything to do with your faith, 
right? Your belief, what God gave you in the beginning. And your prosperity in that regard is when you apply that faith, you will grow. It's impossible that you will not grow when you apply faith. You will grow when you apply faith. Those who had faith in the beginning but did not apply it, they're going to be stripped of what they had. Even that little bit that they have is going to be taken away. Because God has given us a lifetime to get our houses in order. And it's our fault. And indeed, it is our actions of disobedience and outright disrespect the Most High if we don't get there. Somebody says, Michael, medications are getting harder and harder to come by. Yes, because most medications have become ineffective due to the antibiotic problem. Right? Also, the commercials. No pharmaceutical company likes a commercial that says, hey, you take our medicine, but it can cause your heart to stop and your eyeball to fall out. So ask your doctor to get this medicine and that medicine. They don't want to advertise that. Plus, the health care program, Obama, this Obamacare thing, the facts are many people have tried to get Obamacare, but when they come back and say you have to pay $1,600 a month, nobody can afford it. Nobody. It is not doing what it's supposed to do. I personally know three people who have died from cancer because they could not get medical care. So no, it doesn't work. It's not working. It's not consistent. It is very confusing. It's not straightforward. And all they're trying to do is make these pharmaceutical families happy. That's all they're doing. They say it works. They say people are getting medical care. Here are the facts. If you make zero dollars a month and your local health and human services is providing you assistance, yes, you'll get medical care through what they provide. If you're making money yourself, but you don't make enough to pay $1,600 a month, or in some cases $5,600 a month, you're not going to get medical care, right? And a lot of us are caught right there in the middle. We get too much for any kind of state assistance, and we don't make enough to pay the, you know, $2,000 a month for health insurance. So you got a lot of us running around with no health insurance at all. At all. And I personally am not like most people. I live my life by convictions. I will not milk anything for an additional dime. So when I severed some things, I severed everything. Everything. So I'm solely responsible for my own health. And I won't go to a doctor. I don't go to doctors anymore. I don't do that stuff anymore. For what? Not doing that. Not doing that. A lot of people can't. Right? They can't do that. Plus, I'm going to tell you exactly how I am. There is no way in the world, no way in the world, I'm going to ever talk about hope to other people, right, who cannot afford it, but I can. Nope. 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 Not doing that. Not doing that. So I'm just like them now. I'm stuck in the middle. I am. <laughs> uh, thank you, Lord. God is so faithful, though. He is. He is. He'll sustain me for as long as he needs to. I'm not afraid of death. If the Lord, if, if somebody told me right now, Mike, you have, you have cancer, you got three months, I would, I'm telling you, I would tell you guys, listen, we're going to have our get-togethers and, have some celebrations. I'm out of here. Right? I'm not like most people and go, boo-hoo, I'm going to pass away. You know why? Because I believe in the Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. So if anybody ever has the gall to tell me I'm not going to live past three months, I'm going to be the happiest person you ever met in your life. I'm going to be full of joy, overjoyed, over, over, overjoyed. There'll be no sadness in me. And you know, they did that a couple of times, and it was a lie. Just didn't work. Didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work. 
When you believe in Christ, you're not dead. What is death? Death is for those who have no future of the soul. You have a future of the soul. Anyway, folks, here we are with that. Yeah, I'm going to take a break real quick. This time, I'm going to get some coffee because I have to go to sleep at some point. So I'm going to get some coffee. I'll be right back here at COT in just a few minutes. Okay, I'm back. I had to go to war. Are you kidding me? I had to go to war. I'm going to go get some, uh, you know, get some coffee, right? And I ran into one of those multi leg dudes. I did not like spiders. So I had to go to war. Whew. Don't like those things. Oh, yes, yeah, another thing. See, I'll be glad to get away from here because I won't have to see those anymore. Can you imagine? Somebody said, where's my attack? I, I tell you, I do not like spiders. I don't like those things. And they're going to be bad this year, right? I already know what they can and cannot do, right? I just don't like them. I don't like them. But they live with everybody. They do. They live with everybody. And they grow at a... Somebody says, I bet they are in heaven. Well, I heard something about something about certain insects one day, right? Take note of something. In the beginning, animals did not eat flesh. No, nothing did. Right? Remember, they had herbs for um, for meat. They did not eat uh, each other. It'll be like that again. When sin entered by way of murder, murder was everywhere. Requirements changed. The fallen angels tampered with a lot of life forms here on this earth. Some that still exist today. Some are vicious, right? Very vicious. Um, but spiders are incredibly intelligent. Do you guys know that? They're not dumb. They're intelligent. They see you in your houses everywhere you go. They want nothing to do with you. Nothing. I want nothing to do with them. They control other bugs, right? They do. And rodents control them. They do. Anyway. Somebody says, why does what? Meat, meat raise your conscience? Explain that. Explain what you mean. I'll attempt to answer. Somebody said, we have black widows and brown recluses. Yes. Have I been bitten by a multitude of insects? You better believe it. You better believe it. Right? One time, I think it was getting arthritis. And I got stung by a group of hornets and never had any stiffness again. Isn't that funny? Never. Never had any stiffness again. It's a known fact that bee stings can cure arthritis. They trigger the body uh, where it gets rid of inflammation. It does. That's what I was asking somebody. They said, tell me why meat raises my conscience. Like that explains. They said, uh, Oh, more awareness? Protein. Protein. Well, you don't have protein. If, if if the body does not have certain elements in it that you're used to, right, your body has to adjust, which is often not comfortable, right? It's not comfortable. So when you eat meat, you get supercharged with lots of uh, proteins, more energy, while you're... Uh, you know, your, your metabolism is, is somewhat high. That's why. Can that be altered? You better believe it. You better believe it. I used to eat nothing but meat. I ate no vegetables for my whole life, pretty much. And uh, just meat. Just meat. But now I'm, I'm found myself barely eating meat. And when you know it, um, only after that did I find out how many things they changed, right? I do not eat fast food. Now, that could be one difference. I do not eat fast food at all. While your, uh, you know, your, your metabolism is, is somewhat high. That's why. Can that be altered? You better believe it. You better believe it. I used to eat nothing but meat. I ate no vegetables for 
my whole life, pretty much, and uh, just meat, just meat. But now I'm, I'm found myself barely eating meat, and when you know it, um, only after that did I find out how many things they changed. Right? I do not eat fast food. Now that could be one difference. I do not eat fast food at all. I don't touch it. I don't touch it. Not because something is wrong with the food, fast food restaurant, because I don't, well, I don't trust teenagers. I know that's terrible to say, but, you know, they're not really worried about washing their hands, are they? I'm, I'm sort of like that. So anyway, anyway, pray over your food. I know I do. I do. I pray over my food. I do. I really do. I always pray over it. And I've been in several situations that should have taken me, but it didn't. It didn't. All right, so this, the distribution of things, that's coming. We have so many things coming, guys, so many things coming. But not one of you should ever fear what is coming, right? Not one. The Shadim, Sirens. Shadim and dragons. Well, there's a prophesied time. You guys know who Jeremiah is. Well, Jeremiah had another person with him, right? And he was, he talked to God, but they didn't want his writings in there. So funny. There are a lot of people, they didn't want their writings in the Bible because they spoke against the very things that people, that the world pushes down your throat today. In a certain set of prophecies, it said that people, there would be a time where people would be attacked by the Shadim and specters, spirits. Specters, ghosts, earthbound spirits, familiar spirits, right? It also spoke, there's another prophecy of these lights in the skies. Did you know that? How they would come in sporadically at first. Nobody would know them for what they are, and they would come in like shadows. And then they would begin to do what they do. They seduce. They rearrange. They introduce. They're causing people to believe in every type of origin you could possibly imagine. And there's so many theories out there. But the truth is hardly accepted. And there are women out there who invite the Nephilim into their lives. They're attracted to that demonic energy. Fallen angels are known to come by way of dreams and encounters in those dreams. And that was written about. There are things out there where people can... Yeah, I believe the Lord places truth all over the place. It's just that we tend to like our own narrative, right? We do. We most certainly do. So, but these things have been happening for a long time. Very long time. That's why no one should indulge dreams of any, any immoral nature, any no matter what it is, any immoral nature. Mankind and these people believe themselves to be experts in the spirit realm. They're not experts in the spirit realm. They're playing with forces they can scarcely understand. They're being marked in every entity they have played with has marked them for habitation. Hmm. Destruction is coming. And those people who toyed with them will not escape. Because they're starting to believe a narrative so far away from the truth. They'll be in absolute and total bondage. And when I say it's the food in the U.S. worse than other countries, I'll stray where I'm from. Food is good. Better get well. It depends on the individual. Right? America still has good food. It does. It does. But um, but pray over your food, right? That's all. And when you do pray, listen, our Father is highly purposed. Everything he does is for a purpose. Let everything you do be for a purpose and pray. 
in accordance with that. So just don't say, thanks, Lord, you're feeding me. Don't just say, bless my food. Why would you want the Lord to bless your food? Why? Have a reason behind it. Like my reason for blessing my food is that it may strengthen my body so that I may do more of his work. That's a true sentiment. I cannot stand sleep. I don't like to go to sleep. I don't like fatigue. I have chronic fatigue syndrome, they say, right? So I have to, I do wrestle with restrictions of flesh injuries, so on and so forth. But I just plow through them, right? I do always pray over my food for the purpose of energy. I need energy. I don't really look for taste. I don't eat for taste. I eat because the body needs it and I move on. I eat what's necessary and that's it and I move on. I move on. Some days I'll eat 300 calories. Some days I consume no calories. None. Some days I may eat a bit more. I may be real hungry or something like that, right? Um, but I'll eat for fuel. I've been known to not eat until I could barely make it. And those are long durational habits. I only eat because I must. That's it. I do not eat. It is sad. Nobody should ever emulate me. Don't emulate me. I do what I do for authentic reasons, me and the Lord. Now, if you're a pastor and you, you, you're, the Lord doesn't necessarily want you to live like I live, right? He wants you to have resources so you can do what you have to do with the people. I work with a totally different set of people. I have to be real connected to them. And to be connected with the people to really understand them and speak in truth. I have to take on their position. I cannot sit above people and, and speak about happiness. And I've never endured or I'm not familiar with what they have to endure. No. I choose to live just like the people I encourage. I choose to live that way. Right? Like my long durational service. Yes, I tendered. I tendered something which severed everything. I will not take from them not one penny. Because I know what those connections entail. All right, back back to you guys. Let's see. Uh, Mike Warren says, President Trump made the Republican candidate. Do you think things are going to ramp up even quicker? It'll be part of it, yes. It'll be part of it, yes. Naturally, you have half this country who believes that Trump is radical, right? You do. So you have the other half who does not believe that, and that's going to cause tension. It, it doesn't matter who's going to become president. We're going to face the same issues, right? We're going to face the same things. We will. I know right now that in the Middle East, they are seriously deciding what they're going to do prematurely. They're waiting on the first debate between Biden and Trump or to see the numbers. And based on those numbers, they're going to react. If it looks like Trump is going to win, uh, they can't wait. Why? Because of Jerusalem. They know Trump will recognize Jerusalem. And they know at that point, their entire struggle is over. They will act before he gets in office. They're going to act before he gets in office. The entire Islamic world is going to act before he gets in office. They cannot afford to wait this time. Putin has threatened yet again to use nuclear weapons. He has. He has. If Biden continues... Putin's threats may be seen because, listen, they, Biden, Trump, all these guys, they have their positions, they have their roles, uh, but based on what people feel, wars will begin. They really will begin. All right? And he's not whistling Dixie. He's not. Not whistling Dixie. Somebody says cherubim. I need references. Old Testament. Deuteronomy. That's a good place to start. Guys, Deuteronomy is a good place to start. If you want references for all the angelic hosts. Actually, the Old Testament period is pretty rich in that content. 
very rich. There are also uh, obvious passages that talk about several different things that nobody will discuss. I, I think in part because our interpretation of the Word of God is always, for some reason, people make it favorable to the lifestyle they have, right? And they can't extract the truth or, or the truth may escape them. But when you don't make it comfortable for your own lifestyle, you start to see what those scriptures actually are. Someone says, please help, I have confusion. How do I pray for deliverance for someone when they have free will, i.e. alcohol? Well, guess what? All of us have sin, correct? All of us have free will when we did sin. We make bad choices. We do. We think our sin carries no heavy consequence, and so we agree to do it. No one sins unless they agree to sin or is not accounted to them as sin. So all of us have chosen sin. But if we cannot see that we are in this uh, uh, sinful thing and the price is heavy, then we are deceived. So then the true question is, right, is that how do you pray for deliverance for someone when they are truly deceived? That's the question. Listen, continue to be an example of God's deliverance. Never try to force them to do anything, but make sure that you represent the kingdom of God and, uh, by your lifestyle. You don't have to say anything to them. Live what you believe, and they will see your life more than they see the words you speak, right? People will always see you. They'll always know something about your life. So then represent them. Represent the kingdom in accordance with your life, and they'll see that. You'll see exactly what you're doing and not doing. It is an amazing thing. There are people I know personally in my life who have never heard me speak, but they look at my activities, responses to things, how I handle certain situations, and they say the same thing. I know you're a Christian. That's what they say. And then the next thing is, what do you think about this, and, and should I do this? I know you're a Christian. Am I really going to be saved? Right? The first time I went to combat, oh, not first time, it's about the third time I went to combat, people started coming to me and they would ask me if I died. This Because it, it's you would never believe who's considering the truth until the war starts or until, you know, people are in this chaotic moment. But many started coming to me saying, if I die, will I really go to heaven? I mean, they, they ask me that with fear in their faces, with uncertainty, right? They wanted to know for real. I thought that was an amazing thing. So people are watching you. They are. They are watching you. It's just like us. We heard our grandparents. We heard certain people in our lives. We did the opposite. We acted as though we did not hear. But later on in life, why do, you, why do the words of your elders echo in your mind? Well, my grandmother told me this. Well, my grandfather told me this. Right? Well, my mom told me about this. Well, my dad told me about this. So we do hear. We don't always apply. Continue to represent righteousness. Continue that. Because the day will come when the righteous will not be found in the earth. And those people will only have memories of what you did represent if they were privileged enough to know you. Represent well and true. See the situation for what it is. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood. But I'll make it narrow. But of spirits, entities that influence people to do what they do. Right? If a person is in sin, they are highly deceived. Pray for them in accordance. Hmm? Someone says, my dad's an unbeliever, is so afraid to die. Yes, they, they do when they get at a certain age. Out of all the stuff uh, people have proclaimed and talked about death, is that one point where the truth of them is shown. You know, the truth of a person is really known. And a lot of people are frightened. They're scared to death to die. They really are. They really are. Somebody says, Mike, one more question. I was reading about angels. It's not more 
Not what we think at all. I'm trying to picture it, but kind of hard. Well, who, what man has seen an angel in truth? We see descriptions of angels. So I'll tell you this. Every time you see a person encounter an angel in the Bible, they fall down as though they're dead. So what do you think? They, if something were beautiful, why would somebody fall down as though they were dead when they see him? Can somebody answer that? No, they're formidable. Right? Formidable. If something is beautiful, the last thing you're going to do is lay down and, and, and like you're dead. Something beautiful is not going to give you a heart attack. But something you never expected will most certainly give you a heart attack. Right? There was even a person who fainted in the spirit. My goodness. You're already in the spirit, and then you, you faint in the spirit as though you're dead, and it takes an angel to pop you back to life? And that's very different. Very different. Somebody says specifically white trains purpose. The white trains are distribution platforms. They are rigged for distributing necessities to towns and cities all throughout the USA. They have appointed hubs and adaptations where they resupply to go out to uh, certain places. That's what they're for. That's what people are going to see. Because when Walmart's logistical system is because of a virus, uh, uh, by the way, I didn't mention this. We're in the realm of AI. We're also in the time of hackers, right? One sure thing that could bring us down in a heartbeat or AI-generated attacks. Can you imagine all the computer systems in the USA attacked in the same day? Do you know what would happen? Let me give you an idea. A power company is not linked up to the Internet, right? They're not. They have a closed network. So the only way you can absolutely get into a power company is through their intranet or directly, directly into their internet. So, but if people's computers and watches and all this stuff is compromised, even printers, right? If a printer is compromised because it has Wi-Fi capabilities, it can actually snoop or get into that power plant's network and begin to execute commands. Banks are the same way. Did you guys know that last week many banks were hacked? Did you know last week that many companies were hacked? Did you know last week that the government worked overtime to restore systems? Do you know they're working right now to restore systems? Because hacking is much more complicated these days than it ever has been before. They used to look for specific types of code in a computer, right? Telltale signatures of a hack. Now, code is embedded in the code, embedded in the timing and the distribution of the code. Hmm? There you are. So it's much more complicated. AI is not as straightforward as you think. It can live on thousands of computers and have those thousands of devices or computers to interact to do whatever it, it deems necessary to do. I'll say it again. Microsoft and Google were totally taken back. So it was MIT. Because AI came out with its own language. It rewrote itself more effectively and efficiently. It moved from its control station to everybody else's device and then reassembled itself and a Verizon network. They had no idea it was going to do that. They had no idea it was going to do that. Google sunk its AI barge in the ocean, in the waters. They sunk it. Microsoft destroyed its. All of them carry a very special destructive key that will destroy all their mainframes should AI get out of control in an effort to contain parts of it, not the whole thing, but parts of it. 
shift and actual explosions will go off, blowing up data centers. So effectively, they have to go around with a nuclear football, but it's made for AI. All right, not good. Somebody said, uh, uh, my bank locked us out for half a day. I said, yep, yeah, that's part of it. That is part of it. Many things have been compromised. And listen, what, that, what this translates into is the new biometric system is coming out faster than anybody anticipated. There is a demand on the manufacturing of bracelets. Yep, I said it. There's a demand on that. Everything is being moved up a notch. Everything is being sped up. It's coming sooner than what you thought. Sooner than what I thought. Sooner than what anybody thought. Right? I said, where did the righteous go? They go missing. No, when, when the Lord comes, right? When the Lord comes, all those who are here on this earth, when the Lord comes back, they're going to be changed into their final form. They'll meet Christ in the air. You know, in the Bible it says he's coming where 10,000 of us holy ones to execute judgment upon the earth, right? Well, if Paul said you're going to be called up into the clouds in the air, then before he actually goes to, goes to work here on this earth, you're going to go up to him in that same moment. Isn't that something? Remember, there's no time to the most time. So can you imagine one second of the Lord coming back? Suppose he, he comes back and then somebody counts one second here on this earth. That would have been a thousand years of celebration for everybody that's with the Lord in that moment. Think about that. Think about that. that that'll warp your mind thinking about that. So while he's still coming, right, while he's still coming, You'll join him in the air if you're here and alive at that time. And we're already told when that time is coming, there must come a falling away first. That's the very first thing. That's when Christians start turning big time. That's happening right now. Christians, those who, those who say they believe in Christ, it is impossible for anybody to believe in forgiveness and be full of hatred. That's impossible. Right? The Lord said, if you hate your brother, the love of God is not in you. Your brother is everybody but you, even your enemy. So if you hate somebody out there, the love of God is not in you. That's a caution. That's a gauge. That's like a fuel tank gauge. And if you are full of hatred to anybody here on this earth, then your gauge is on E, and you need to get some fuel fast. Right? Thank God for gauges. Thank God for gauges. If I ever felt hatred towards a person on this earth, I'm running to Christ. Do you hear me? I'm running to Christ. I will not exist, nor let the sun go down on any anger in me. I'm going to get that thing purged. I'm not going to suppress it. I'm going to want that to be pulled out of me. See that? I don't want that in me. So that day will not come unless there come a falling away person, that man of perdition be revealed. That is the Antichrist. The man of perdition is the Antichrist. He must be revealed. And we know by revelation, the first beast comes and Satan gives it its power, Satan great authority. And then we know number two, a second beast rises out from the land who had two horns like a lamb and spake as a dragon. That one. He's the one that causes everybody to receive a mark. He's the one that works miracles in front of everybody. He's the one that causes the world to make an image to the first beast who had a deadly wound by a sword, but yet lived. That's the Antichrist. The first beast, that's the kingdom of the Antichrist or the system of the Antichrist. The second beast is the Antichrist slash false prophet. That's what it is, Revelation. Right? So, that, but the Lord is not coming until that man of perdition is revealed. He's not coming until that man of perdition is revealed. God works. God works in a purposed way, right? So, when that man of perdition is revealed, it's already told to us. It's already told to us that the world's going to make an image for the first beast, right? And then He will give light to that image. To kill as many as would not worship it. Well, we're not going to worship the beast, the dragon, right? Or 
the Antichrist. And so that's perfect. The Lord said he would come when both these things happen. Not before. And it just so happens in Revelation, the last trump blows at the installment of that kingdom and the execution of the occupation of that kingdom. My goodness. So when the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel is where it should not be, the Lord is coming. The Lord is coming. What about those in Jerusalem? They have to, a lot of them have to stay here. They have to go through something. That's why it says those in Judea flee into the mountains. They can't go because they have not accepted Christ right now. They can't go. They have to be refined. They will not as a whole accept Christ until this happens. I believe there are a multitude of earthquakes in Revelation. I most certainly do. Now, Revelation, I don't believe Revelation is out of order. Revelation is written in a way where it gives you a history of every component spoken of in Revelation. Right? It gives you a history of the woman with the 12 stars. It gives you a history of the woman that sits atop the beast. It gives you a history of Babylon in the kingdom of the beast. It gives you a history of these things. So it'll go to prophecy, then a history, then prophecy, then a history. And if you read it as such, you'll find, wait a minute, this is not out of order, right? This is not out of order. God is just being intricate in telling us what each component is. And if you read that whole thing, you're going to find it's relevant in your life right now. There's a foreshadowing that's happening right now. Anybody who reads the book of Revelation and does not change anything, keeps it as it is, right? They're going to be blessed. You're going to know what operates in the world right now. You're going to know what the final plans are of humanity and every dark spirit in the earth is right now. You're going to know the master plan right now. And you can, you, if you can see that, you'll see all the components in their respective positions, doing exactly what, what is said they're going to do in Revelation. You'll see that today, right now. And when you have that confidence and you see that, you're going to be lifted up with joy also, because you're going to know, wait a minute, the Lord had given this to us already. I can see what's happening because the Lord gave us his word. See, when you see the darkness come to pass, you better believe the light is going to come to pass too. You better believe it. When I see dark things come to pass that are prophesying the word of God, I get excited. I get excited. Because that means the promises of the living God never fail. That means he's faithful to his word. That's what it means, right? It's an awesome thing. And again, one of the biggest things about prophecy that really gets me is that people end up being exactly as God described them. They end up being just like he described them. They end up being just like that. It's an amazing thing to me. So the amazing part is not creatures coming out of the earth. It is not the Antichrist. It is not the abomination and desolation. It is not, you know, some alien faction or whatever people want to call them. It's, it's not that. It's not the stars falling from the heavens to the earth like fig shaken from a mighty wind. It's not the sky departing as a scroll when it's rolled together. It is not the great earthquake that's going to remove every island and every uh, mountain out of its place. It's not that. It's that people end up being just as God described. That's the part that gets me. So it's amazing. It's an amazing thing. Amazing thing. Somebody says, well, the Jewish people go to Petra. Well, they know to go there. I know a lot of Christian pastors and preachers have put Bibles at Petra here. Yeah. Uh, listen, when Jesus Christ gives a command, right, you better believe that command is going to be in the hearts, minds, and souls, and bodies of those who are involved at that time. He's going to be with you, too, the same way. See, uh, uh, like the Bible. Suppose one of you does not have a Bible. See, it's something you have to know, right? You're going to have the Word of God. Even if all the paper on earth burns up, you're going to have the Word of God. You're going to have it. Because God has given man the ability to do what he does, right? We utilize what we have. Right now you have paper Bibles. If there ever came a time when they would take paper Bibles away, God would make the Bible that's already sewn into you come alive. You'd know everything. 
you need to know. My, I'm, I'm telling you right now, you would know what you need to know. Here's why I'm saying this so strongly. I cannot prove this. I can only tell this to you, right? I was talking to a group of people, and there was this is before I read the entire Bible. There were some chapters I'd never read before, never saw. I recited the chapters in front of people in a language I do not speak. A language on the earth, but a language I do not speak. You know that's God. That's nobody but God. See, nobody can ever tell me, well, if you don't have a Bible, you're not going to know Scripture. That wrong, 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 wrong. Because God put his word in you. You exist, you live, you breathe by his word, by the decrees of his word. If all paper on the earth burned up, that word would come alive within you. Because you would need it. You'll always have it. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Plus, Christ is not, he is not separate from the word. We rely upon. He is the word we rely upon. Let me calm down. It's too late to get excited. Might break something over here. God will give us what we need when we need it. Remember, he told his people, he said, listen, when, when they take you captive, don't sit there and meditate what you're going to say. The Holy Spirit will give you and teach you what to say in the same hour you need to say it. That's awesome, isn't it? And God is faithful. He will most certainly do it. He will do it in a heartbeat. He will do it in a heartbeat. See, we're not dealing with some fictitious book. That's not what we're dealing with. This is the real deal. Despite what people think, that word is within you. And when the necessity of the word needs to go forward, and you're the only one around, it's coming out of you. The Lord is so awesome. He is so awesome. He's incredibly awesome. All right, one more question. I don't want to, it's, it's already halfway through the, it's kind of late, huh? That's funny, I'm all loud, worked up, excited. What, what is happening here? We see the day is coming, we do, we do. We see what's coming. And what I'm telling you is that you're not alone. You are not. And as these days get worse, the embrace, the embrace is going to be incredible. Your embrace from the Lord directly to you. You hear me? Somebody says, I'm confused over the scripture, Matthew 20 to 11. And when the king came, in to see the guest, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment, and he saith unto him, Friend, how camest thou hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Matthew twenty two eleven. That's a parable. Let, let's go find it. Matthew twenty two eleven is a is a is a perfect parable, right? In which the Lord was giving his Schooling his examples. Let me pull it up here so I can run my choppers about it. Matthew twenty two eleven. Now listen, listen, listen. Matthew twenty two eight. Then said he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways and as and as many as ye shall find. Bid to the marriage, come to the marriage. So the servants went out into the highways and gathered together all that, all as many as could be found, both bad and good, and the wedding was finished or furnished with the guests, right? So the guests came and occupied the place, and when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, Friend, how camest thou hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bid him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, and few are chosen. Listen, who was that man that popped up in the in the wedding? A thief that came up another way. God has already paved the way to salvation. It is through Christ that is the only way. 
will be completed. Now, but a guest showed up who did not come the pathway that was provided. He's known as a thief. And all thieves who try to come up a different way are going to be cast into outer darkness. It is through Christ and through Christ only where one will be joined in eternity with the Almighty. Through Christ. There is no other way. But people are trying every way so they can circumvent Christ. Have you noticed all these other religions? What do they do? They go around Christ. They're trying to get to God outside of Christ. They're doing everything they can do to go outside of Christ. We can go directly to Christ and through him. Through him we are completed, not through anybody else. That's what it means. That's part of a parable. Hmm. Folks. Listen, listen, I see somebody talk saying never take the mark. The scriptures indicate if you're written in the book of life, you will not take the mark of the beast. All of us have weaknesses within us. So you know what that means, don't you? Right? No wonder Jesus said, don't get excited because you have authority over these demons and spirits, but rather because your names are written in the book of life. Get excited about that because if you're written in the book of life, Jesus is your defense. He is the reason you won't take the mark, not yourselves. If left to us, we would fail, give in and fold. But it's not going to be left to us. It'll be Christ in us, in us who overcomes Satan. Do, do you hear me? Christ in us will overcome the Antichrist. So be faithful to him now. Listen, just do. Just do. Right, righteous thing in accordance with Yahshua HaMashiach. That's it. And do it today and live that way. And purge yourselves of all other things. Be genuine to Christ. You be faithful to him now. He will faithfully have you victorious then. Do you hear me? He will bring your salvation to completion. And he will not fail. It is by him. We overcome the world because he has already overcome the world. Now, these things start to make sense because if you don't overcome the world, you're going to fall victim to the Antichrist. And you're not some victim, you're victorious. Two different words. Hmm? Two different words. Somebody said, well, like Thomas of Athena statue in, in, in uh, Parthena in Nashville. Uh, listen, there there are idols all over the USA. Let's go ahead and face it, right? A Statue of Liberty. I know what they told everybody. That's not what it is. That is not what it is. In fact, listen to me. The Statue of Liberty wears the same crown that Beyonce's little outfit had on. And every single member of a specific organization Whereas once a year, it mirrors, is identical to the same statue that has three frogs. This is in a graveyard. There are three frogs facing a goat man and three other entities facing a goat man in public, Baphomet, facing that thing, right? And there's a statue in the back. That looks just like the Statue of Liberty. But it's not the Statue of Liberty. It's a mirror of that original statue. See, there are two twins to the Statue of Liberty. People in America 
have called it the Statue of Liberty. The Masons called it the Statue of Liberty. That is not the original name. It was worshipped. France copied something that people worshipped. France did this a long time ago. The statue is, 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 is said to be about 4,000 years old. And it looks, the original statue is, it looks just like the Statue of Liberty. Do you see how they change the names of things? And people still worship the Statue of Liberty. They do. It's the same type of worship. Listen, because back in the day, they believed in that stuff. And they believed in the ideology the statue represented. The same thing is happening now. They have replicated the ancient world. You know, in the Pentagon a long time ago, they used to say that the Sumerian gods are back. They're back in power. And the same worship they had back then they have today, they just call things different names. People worship flesh and blood. They're worshiping demons as gods even right now. They're doing the exact same thing. If they really took off their cloaks, nobody would serve them, worship them, want to be like them or anything else. They are the rich among you. And people worship them as gods right now. They're doing it right now. See, in the Pentagon, they went from the Sumerian gods are returning. That was the buzzword to they're here. They're back in power. And indeed, a notable change took place in this earth. Better be careful what you bleed for. Satan is a deceiver. He will masquerade as so many different things. Listen, when you worship, right, you put something above your fellow man. It better not be anything on this earth. It better be Christ Jesus, because anything else put above your fellow man is your worship to something else. That is not God. And I tell you right now, they're teaching you how to hate your fellow man. They're giving people a heart to kill their fellow man. Right now they're doing it. I know it causes a compromise. I know it's about a compromise. But I'm sorry, that's the way it is. There's a righteous way to handle a situation. And there's what the world thinks is right. A cult of violence is not the answer. To live barbaric is not the answer. See, that's why Christ was not a friend of this world. That's why he said the world hated him, because he did not speak favorably of anything they did in the world. Nothing they did in the world was suitable for Christ. Why should it be suitable for us? Now, we have to live in this world, but we don't have to have that mess in our hearts. We don't have to hate like the world hates. I know this is not popular. I know it's not. There is a way to do everything. There is. See, what's happening is this. Let me tell you the situation I see, especially with the border. I see a lot of Chinese agents who come over the border, but they're causing people to hate everybody who comes over the border, even the legal ones that come over the border, right? Don't fall for that. There are some bad, bad people who come through all borders. I mean some bad ones. Don't you make them make you start hating everybody. Don't do that. Don't do it. Don't you do it. Don't do it. Because if, if people continue to do that, it's going to be, that's going to be the very border they're going to try to escape from. When this place, America, goes to pot, I'm just telling you what I know. You don't have to believe it, but keep living. And you'll see it. People are going to try to escape out of America through that border, and they're going to be denied. I'm telling you what I know. God takes no parts in pride. Right? He does not do that. you got to be careful. See, that's why presidents need you guys beside them. Right? Like Trump needs one of you guys up there. Not these populist 
thinkers. No, and he's one of you guys. Trump is not familiar with all these wicked governmental things. He is not. He is not familiar with that. But I know for a fact they're going to use him until they cannot. I'm just telling you what I know. Didn't you see what happened the first time around? Did you not see what happened the first time around? I'm just telling you what I know. And while everybody's cheering him on, who's praying for him? That's what he needs. He needs some of you in his proximity. You want to see real change? Then you turn to the Lord. You humble yourselves and you pray. You seek his face. And you cover those leaders with your prayer. As you seek to follow Christ, then you'll see real change. President Trump does not need all the those people that are around him. They couldn't stand him the first time around. You know why they're with him. You know why they act loyal to him. Because of people like him. You already know that. You also know they tried to cause him to do everything in a real dumb, dumb manner the first time. And it backfired because the people liked him. You know they're going to try to hang him out to dry this time. They're going to use him. And the enemy of him is in his cabinet. They're right there next to him. They do not believe like you do. They are loyal to something else. Rumors, guys. Be careful of rumors. I, I don't really go with rumors. I have to know people personally. Listen to me. Listen, listen to me carefully, right? Especially when it comes to affiliations, right? You're not going to be rich in this world and be some righteous, holy person. That's not going to happen. We all know the truth. But we also know God put us here to assist in the gospel, which is the redemption of mankind, not the condemnation of mankind. Right? We know this. We know it. Many of you Masons were in your families, right? They were certainly in mine. Certainly. If you're rich, you're going to be bought in to that gentleman's circle. You will. If you've gone to college, right, and you, you, you're going to make a difference in this world, you're going to belong to some, you're going to be affiliated with some sorority. Some organization is going to approach you to guarantee position placement or career placement. You're not going to have $500 million and not have the controllers of that $500 million distant from you. It doesn't work that way. It does not work that way. Do you not know that to have $300 million is automatic admittance into something you are mandated to attend? Uh-oh. Yes. Get $300 million and watch how your life will change. And you can say nothing about it. You don't think people can make your money disappear in a heartbeat? Sure they can. Because these people own the banks. They can tie your money up in the legal system for the rest of your life. Hope you know that. That's why the Lord said pray for your leaders. He already knew. They were not squeaky clean. He already knew that. We know that too. We know it. Don't get offended if somebody says, you know, so-and-so is affiliated with this and that. Don't get offended. Because no one is going to have hundreds of millions of dollars here in the USA and not have an affiliation with something else. It doesn't work that way. That's not the way it works. That's why you pray for your leaders. Those of you, right, who are Democrats, you should be praying for Biden and his entire cabinet. Those of you who are Republicans, you should be praying for your Republican president. We should pray without ceasing. We have to be on the job. 
We're not people who stand up and point condemnation of mankind. Because Christ did not do it. We have no right to do it. Christ will not condemn anybody right now. Somebody said, is that why lottery winners have issues? Yes, it is. They have a mandate, period. Go out and win the lottery. And you'll see. It's not going to be what you think it is. And you cannot speak out about it. But if you already know about it, my advice, tenure or resignation. Disconnect yourself from it totally. Don't be controlled like that. Not for money. Not for money. They also assign people to your life. You get handlers. You do. And if you turn your back on that stuff, they'll make sure you stay broke. They will. But what they don't know is that those who trust in Christ are rich. Mm -hmm. Well, folks, it is that time. Somebody said, uh, it sounds like a silly question, but where do you, where do you put it? Where do I put what? Where do you put what? Are banks safe? Might listen. If if the bank goes down, right? People have money. If the banks go down, I'll, I'll tell you something. If you have cash money and the banks go down, you have no records in the bank, that cash money that you have is worthless. If your name is on the ledger in the bank, your dollar figure is going to be beside it. So when the bank goes back up again, which it will, it's going to stay in operation. We know this by revelation, right? Then your money didn't go anywhere. It didn't. If your name is not on that ledger, you don't exist. You don't have any money. Kind of like that guy in a, there was a gentleman in Hawaii that stored his gold and silver in one of those underground things in a vault. Nobody expected the lava to come. Took all of it. You know what lava does, the gold and silver? Gone. It's gone. It's gone. It was in the ground in one of those little underground, you know, little, little two-person bunker things inside of a safe in the lava took everything it's gone all of his investment is gone gone bye-bye goodbye gone that happened overseas as well it happened in a few other places as well listen to me when you you guys have resources right you do let me tell you, let me tell you something. With the resources you have, your money is like a tool. It's a tool, do you hear me? Right? I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for the tools I have to help develop things that help people. I'm very thankful. So those tools are designated kingdom tools. That's with her, and I don't use them. I do not use those tools for any other reason than to assist somebody else. I mean that. When I designate something to the kingdom, it is not going to be misused. It will not. Right? My resources are for the kingdom. Period. They're for nothing else. They're for the kingdom. So I'm grateful. Now, it's being grateful. The Lord will instruct. He can also keep your things. If you get greedy, you're not purposed in righteousness behind what you're doing. You're going to lose your shirt. You will. If you fall in love with the idea of having lots of resources, you can lose everything. It's not going to do you any good. It won't. So my advice is to first understand these things are tools, right? Second, have a serious mindset and heart to assist in the Lord's work with those tools. That means taking care of your families. That's what it means, take nurturing your families, take care of your families with the tools that God has provided you. Always be thankful for them. Never complain about them. Be thankful. I'll say it again. Some of you, 
You're not meant to be broke, not even close to broke. You're not meant to be broke. You're not. Somebody said, Mike, what do I do with a Masonic Bible? Hmm. Make sure nobody else can get their hands on it. Let me ask you guys something. I burnt three Masonic Bibles because nobody knew what to do with them, so I just burned them up. I did. I just burnt them. See, people believe in curses and weird things. I do not. I believe in the power of Christ. No curse is effective against Christ. If I remain in him, no curse is effective on me. But I didn't want anybody else to have those things, so I burnt them. Oops. Oops. I mean, a lot of people upset, angry. If you only knew how badly I'm hated. If you only knew. I've been cursed. I've had witchcraft put on me and everything else, and I keep warning people, you take that route. Everything you desire upon me, you're going to have sevenfold because of Christ. Always tell them it's because of Christ. So if you don't want to kill yourself, don't do it. And they did so anyway. Bad mistake. The Lord Jesus is my Lord, King and Lord, King, Lord, and Savior, King, Lord, Savior, and King of Kings, crowned most high, above all things in man, appointed to be the one. He is the word of the creator of all things, and nothing exists without him. And all things do function, breathe, and exist within him. It is his power that has dominion over all things. And everything else in comparison is but foolishness. And the Lord does not play games. So I take a permanent position against all that voodoo witchcraft stuff. If I'm going to fear something, it would be a healthy amount of respect for the most high. Satan's on death row. He's a defeated foe. So I said I had a Masonic Bible and burnt it, prayed while I did. I don't, listen, when I did that too, because other people didn't know what to do with their Masonic Bibles, they, they were afraid of it. I said, send it to me. I'll get rid of it for you. So I burnt them. Burned them all up. I most certainly did. But I'll tell you something, the Lord is saying a prayer over you right now. In fact, he has decreed something over you. He already prayed for you. Isn't that something? Just remain in him. And your authority is his authority. And you operate by his power. Because all these voodoo people, right? I'll tell them point blank. I have no power, no nothing. But my Lord has all authority. And I will remain in him. And nothing is victorious over him. And he will subdue all things. And all things are subdued before him. I don't play the witchcraft game, the voodoo game, all these games people play. I'm quite serious. About my following Christ. And Christ is serious about your salvation. Remember that. Because your Father in Heaven wants you to go all the way home. All the way home. 
Okay, folks, that's it for tonight. You guys get some rest. I want to say God bless everybody. Stay within the Lord. The Lord will keep you. He'll keep you always. Always, always, always. <laughs> now, and, oh, by the way, nobody goes anywhere until Christ says, it's time for you to go. Remember that. And all of you uh, folks who have masons in your families, remain in Christ. He is the principal authority of all authorities. <laughs>